All right, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back. We're looking at the nervous system again. Last day we looked at what a neuron was, and now we're going to talk about how a message is sent. So what's the main idea here? The transmission of nerve, nerve impulse, it goes along the entire length of a neuron. So what is it? So what it is, it's an electrical chem, electrochemical message. Uh, it uses the movement of ions, more specifically sodium and potassium, uh, in order to generate this message. So what do you want to think about when you're thinking about a signal is just like dominoes. In order to get uh, from one end of the neuron to the next, uh, so here's our ne neuron, looks really nothing like that. In order to get from this end to this end, once this starts, it will not stop until it gets to the very end of the neuron. So what we call it is an all or none response. It either triggers the response and that impulse is sent, or it doesn't. Okay, it doesn't go part way and then stop. Okay, so first of all, this is what happens. We're going to start with the resting potential. We're going to move forward into the acting pot action potential. And then it, finally, we have to go into recovery. So these are the steps that you need to know. And what we're going to do now is go into detail on what's happening at each step. But please draw this part right here uh, because it's going to show what's happening. So first of all, in order to get started here, there's a greater concentration, as you can see, of sodium ions outside the neuron. So this yellow part right here is considered the neuron, and then anything outside is, well, outside the neuron. So and a greater uh, potassium, excuse me, a greater concentration of potassium, which is K plus, sodium Na plus. So outside we have lots of sodium, and on the inside we have lots of uh, potassium. So we just, <clears throat> so excuse me, so because of this, we have a relatively negatively charged start. Because if you look at this here, we have a lot of negatives, chlorines and amino acids, and it's more heavily charged in the negative direction than it is positive. Because look at this one, only one, two, three, four positives, and the rest are negatives. Okay? So the way to remember this, oops, sorry, is by saying kin really just means potassium in, so potassium inside. The resting potential, which means the voltage of this neuron at rest before it's engaged, is minus 65 millivolts. Okay, so this number you need to know. A reminder, resting potential of an unstimulated neuron is negative 65. So resting potential is maintained by the sodium potassium pumps, excuse me, which we'll talk about a little bit more in a little bit. It's active transport. If it's pumping it, it needs energy. Okay, so action potential. How does this message actually get sent? Well, what happens is something happens where the neuron is stimulated. So it could be something with touch. It could be something visual. It depends on what the uh, sensory receptor is. So let's just use it if it's a neuron that's attached to the tip of your finger. Okay, as soon as you have some sort of pin prick, touch that finger, uh, it's going to send a signal. And what this does is it depolarizes this neuron. So it allows, by doing that, it allows sodium channels to open. Okay, so once these channels open, sodium that was outside is now going to join or come inside. So you're going to have to draw this. Okay, what happens, sodium ions diffuse into the, ne the neuron. And then the charges reverse at that point. So now there's going to be more positive coming in, and then it continues to do so. And once this one, uh, once the charge moves inside, it causes the next channel to open, and the next channel, and the next channel. They're called voltage regulated channels because a change in voltage will cause them to open. And what it does is it causes this now to become positive 40. It was minus 65 before with all those negatives inside, but now since all these extra sodiums are coming in, it's more positively charged. Okay, keeping on going. So what it does is it creates a wave, like I was just saying. The, charge in, uh, the change in the charge opens other sodium gates, and it continues to open, 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 and it moves down the neuron just like a wave would. Okay, So sodium ions continue to move in and they move down the neuron and this is what we call an action potential. It's basically just the movement of a nerve impulse. Okay, So you can pause that and get that down. 
So the action potential continued. So what happens next is it gets repolarized because right now it's got it's minus or sorry it's right now it's plus 40 inside. And what happens now is once that sodium's keeping on going, it causes these potassium channels to open up. And what happens now is the potassium leaves the cell. So now we have these positives that are going back out. And what it does, it restores that same potential that it was at resting of minus 65. Once all those potassiums come out, it changes it to minus 65 millivolts. Okay? And then what happens is as it opens up, right behind it, it begins to close again too. Oops, sorry. Okay, so you can pause that and write that down. So finally, we have exactly what we're hoping for in terms of the charges. You have a minus 65 back in here, but the problem is we can't get that sodium back in because there's already a large amount of sodium in there, so it won't go through because of diffusion. So we need to get that sodium back out and the potassium back in in order to uh, restart our neuron again. Okay, so after firing, it has to what's called reset itself. So the sodium moves, needs to move back out, potassium needs to move back in, and it does so using sodium potassium pumps. And so it actively, using energy, pumps sodium back out of the neuron, pumps so potassium back in, and now we're ready to start another uh, nerve impulse. Okay, so you can pause that and write that down. So here it is. So now it's ready to fire again. So as soon as we have, so it's negative 65 again, ready to go. As soon as we have some sort of stimulus, uh, it'll cause those sodium channels to open back up and we can start the process once more. So here comes a little, uh, a little recap. So we have our resting potential right here, which is about minus 65. It has some sort of input. It has to reach a certain threshold. Once it reaches that threshold, it's going to go no matter what. So once it gets a certain amount of a stimulus, it's going to go up in terms of its voltage because of all that sodium rushing in. And then the potassium is going to be kicked back out and it drops back down again. And then it has to restart. Okay. So stimulus reaches its threshold potential, which just means some sort of stimulus. Sodium channels open, potassium gates are closed. Then the sodium channels close, the potassium opens. So this will get us to back to plus 40. This brings it back to minus 65. And then it pumps it back out, keeps it minus 65, but now our sodium is out and our potassium is in. Okay, so you can write that down. And then finally, we have a special uh, action. It's called saltatory. Let's see if saltatory, probably spelled that wrong. Conduction. And what that means is that since we have on our axon, where normally we have our voltage traveling down here, we have these special little sheaths that we mentioned before, these myelin sheaths. And they're protected. They're lipid. So they do not allow sodium to come in and potassium to go out. So how do we stimulate our nerves that are covered with myelin? Because not all of them are. Interneurons are not covered with this myelin. Well, we remember this uh, ro nodes of Ranvier, where there's parts that aren't covered. Uh, that's where sodium and potassium are going to come in. So let's look at it. So they're sh called Schwann cells. They insulate the neuron. Sodium and potassium cannot enter. And so they can only enter at the nodes of Ranvier. So what they do, it actually increases the speed of the impulse because since they're only opening at these spots here, it actually allows it to look like it's this jumping action. So instead of slowly causing all these channels to open all the way, it jumps you know, multiple channels and gets down there quite a bit quicker. So they hop from node to node. Okay, so it changes into something that's 150 uh, meters per second. So really, really fast compared to five meters per second that would be an unmyelinated sheath. Okay, so if you have any questions about this, uh, we'll be doing this in a lot of detail next time. Uh, just some sort of disorders can affect the, uh, the quickness of our conduction. So multiple sclerosis, uh, the attests or T cells in our uh, immune system attack myelin sheaths. So if these myelin sheaths are stripped, 
now our signal is slow and sometimes uh, and that can cause some serious nervous disorders okay so I'm sure there's gonna be plenty of questions we're gonna do this a lot in depth in class but if you have questions make sure you write them down